adjust panel has different type of tools, really random. I will not talk about the cutoff and voxel height because I've talked about them in the previous videos. I'll start with measure. Measure is pretty easy. You go press shift to snap the angle, I drag it out. And I do it from the top view, so I'll shift snap to the top view. I've got a bunch of different options here, pretty self-explanatory, all of them. Next tool is the 3D print support. So it generates you the supports for 3D printing. You can change the size and the you know, lens and those things here. I can also click on the mesh and create new ones. I know a lot of people are using 3D code for different type of mold work, so this could be useful for them, this type of uh, customizability. I, however, however, use different type of slicing software so they're free and available with different presets for different printers. I have YouTube videos where I was doing figurines and little toys in 3D code and then slicing them using the third-party free software and then printing them on my 3D printer. The next tool is Voxel Slice. It's a good tool for preparation for 3D printing. Again, you can go and check what's inside the model. If I go inside here, click Extract Shell, make shell using Voxels and then update it and slice it up and down, you can see it's showing you the slice. However, it is a little bit buggy if the mesh is big. So if you're having a few million, 10 million, 20 million triangles, I did experience some crashing. <clears throat> so beware of that. Next tool, the pose tool, super useful. I use it a lot in modeling. Pretty much everybody is using it a lot in modeling. So here I need to use this menu for different shapes. Say quick selection with the rectangular selection, then I can do this. And modify the shape, especially works especially well with voxels. I can go and do something really unusual, more like a hard surface shape. You know, when you have a blending of these two parts together. Then if I click on the brush tool and then if I drag it from top to bottom, it will pick a gradient. And I can modify it. Again, to drop the selection, I usually press Ctrl D. This is my hotkey to resample and drop selection as well. If I drag this sticker out too far away or outside the mesh, you'll see this selection is not happening, it has to be inside. A little bit counterintuitive, but something to be aware of. Press Ctrl D. And we have the options here, like smooth selection. Smooth selection is pretty slow. I don't use it because it's just not really efficient. I do use invert selection every now and then. And other tools I hardly ever use. Next tool is pretty cool, called the Fit. It will show you these options, which kind of not the things you want to use. So what you want to do, and this Fit tool is duplicated here. It's called Move to Big Point. If I press Shift F, it will jump over to the point. Can be really, really useful if you're kit bash and stuff. This stuff, I can press the starting point, press the end point, drag it across, and then say fit using points, and it will move it there. Really slow, not efficient. So Shift S, Shift F, and jump across. This is the way to go. Then we have reproject. So if I pick this model, this one of the top model, it's just a sphere ball at the top. And if then I click on the project, micro projection here, it will pick all the details from there. But I need to increase the distance because right now it's a bit small, so I need to increase it. Otherwise, we'll get some bugs then, which you've already tried. You can see it's been reprojected. It's also been turned to a surface. And it can reproject vertex data as well. So if the model has been painted, uh, all the color data will also get reprojected. So quite a powerful tool, really similar to reprojection in ZBrush, if you're familiar with that one. The move tool allows you to move the vertices around. You can see this box right there, it says voxelize immediately. The thing is that right now it turns the object into a surface mode. 
and it means that right now it's a surface thing. If I press enter, it will be turned into the voxel mode. Otherwise, you can click here and start to voxelize everything immediately. If I change the alphas, it will change the way it behaves. I can also press control for different uh, projection. So, and the way the different behavior. And topological move is for more complex objects to move parts of the object. The cell allows you to hide a part of the object like this. I've never found it to be useful. I honestly don't know when it's going to be useful. Uh, but that's the tool. The copy tool is really cool. So if I turn the top layer into ghost mode, I can then pick the bottom sphere and I can start copying the top part to the bottom. So if I hide it all together, you can see it's really similar to reprojection, probably even better because in this case, we have a lot of control uh, over the behavior of the copy mode. Barrelief tool is is more used for molding, so we can change stuff to make uh, more efficient molds that will remove some undercuts and everything. And this is really goes kind of hand in hand with the undercut to the bottom. If I hit apply, it should try to, to fix stuff that will be hard to 3D print. Again, handy for 3D printing. This the stuff that you can't really do in other softwares that easily. So a pretty powerful tool set for molding and 3D uh, printing.